Okay, welcome back, guys. We're going to be solving an interesting question from the second chapter of Miriam textbook. And in this question, we know that the unstretched length of the spring is R. And when pin P is in an arbitrary position theta, we need to determine the X and Y component of the force which the spring exerts on the pin. And in the second part of the question, we have some values for the R, K, and theta. And from the question, we know that the force in the spring is given by F is equal to K times delta. So K is the spring constant and delta is the extension from the unstretched length. So basically, delta is the final length minus the initial length. So LF in here would be uh, what we have basically for AP. So AP would be the final length of the spring and L0 or the initial length is what we know from the question, the honest stretch length or R. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to connect point B to in here in order to make a right triangle and let's call this point uh, maybe B. So what we need at the end would be the force in the spring, which will be K times delta. And let's see how we can find this delta. So let's call this angle right here alpha. And if we can uh, somehow find the alpha, we know. So this will be our x and this will be our y. If we can figure the angle alpha of finding the fx and fy is pretty easy. But now the question is, uh, we have to figure out the force that spring exerts on the pin. And we know when the spring stretches, uh, that means it will be in tension. Let's call this force the fs that we have. But that's the force that is applying on the spring. What we are interested is in is the force on point P or the pin, which based on the Newton's law would be same force just in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to show this force in here. So this would be our force that we are looking for. Uh, which we called it fs and if that's the case it's easy enough to find fx and fy basically this will be our fx and this will be our fy so our fx we can see it's negative since it's in the opposite direction of x so we'll have minus fs times cosine of alpha and our fy would be fs times sine of alpha well, let's see what we can do in here if you consider this right triangle that we have in here so based on the pythagorean theorem we know that ap squared is equal to ab squared plus bp squared and if we look at the right triangle underneath i'm going to show it in yellow so this one so this right triangle in here, we know that OP is R because it's the radius of the half circle that we have. Uh, so it's easy enough to find BP. Look, basically BP would be, so in here our BP is basically R sine of theta and OB will be R cosine of theta. So we're just going to plug in all these into our Pythagorean theorem that we have in here. And if that's the case, let's see what we get for AP. So if we look at the figure, AP from the first line is basically R plus delta. So we know this is equal to delta, which means AP is R plus delta. So for AP, we have R plus delta squared is equal to AB and let's see how we can find AB so looking at the figure we know from here to here is 2R and we found this part in the previous step which was OB right here so if you want to find AB we simply have 2R minus R cosine of theta so we're just going to put that in here to r minus r cosine of theta squared plus bp and bp be founded in the previous step in red so that would be r sine of theta to the power of 2. so in here if we do the square root on each side we'll have r plus delta is equal to the square root of 
uh, we can actually factor r2 in here so uh, we can factor r squared in here so we can take that out 2 minus cosine of theta squared plus same thing in here r squared can get out of the parentheses sine squared theta so from here we can we can factor r squared and take it out so if we do that so in here we have r squared times 2 minus cosine of theta squared plus sine squared of theta and we have r plus delta in here so our delta would be simply this can get out of the square root r times the square root of 2 minus cosine of theta squared plus sine squared theta minus r so this was the hardest part of this question since we have delta and as long as we have delta it's easy enough to find the fs because our fs was k times delta which is r the square root of 2 minus cosine of theta squared plus sine squared of theta minus r but for finding the fx and fy we obviously need um, the sign up so if we want to find the fx as we wrote it in here we need the value of sine of alpha and cosine of alpha so let's start with the sine of alpha first so what we are trying to find is let's get back to our figure what we are trying to find is fx and fy now that we have fs we have to figure out the sine of alpha and cosine of alpha so for finding the sine of alpha i was going to write it down in this corner here so if you want to find the sine of alpha, we know sine of alpha would be the opposite, which is AB divided by hypotenuse, which is AP. And here sine of alpha would be simply, we found AB in here. So uh, we can also factor R in here, two minus cosine of theta divided by AP, which is what we have in here, R plus delta and we will have the same thing for cosine of alpha cosine of alpha will be the adjacent which is bp or what we have in here r sine of theta divided by r plus delta so all we need to do in here since we have the thetas known so in in the second part of the question all we need to do we know our r is 400 we have k and we have theta as long as we have r and theta we can find delta in here and if we find delta we, we're good to go to find this sine and cosine so the givens that we have in here is our r which is 400 millimeter and we need to convert this to meter so divided by thousand meter uh we know our theta is 40 degrees and we know our k is 1.4 kilonewton per meter or 1400 newton per meter and from here we can find our delta which would be r times so 0.4 times 2 minus cosine of 40 degrees squared plus so i'm i'm using this formula in here that we found to so just plug in the numbers in here degrees minus 0.4 and if we calculate this we'll get 0 0.157 meter and this would be the extension of this spring and once we have that we are good to go to find the sine of alpha and cosine of alpha which we found in previous steps so sine of alpha was r times 2 minus cosine of theta divided by r plus delta so port 0.4 times 2 minus cosine of 40 degrees divided by r which is 0.4 plus 0 0.157 and this is going to give us 0 0.886 and cosine of alpha would be r sine of theta divided by r plus delta which was the hypotenuse of the right triangle so 0.4 times sine of 40 degrees divided by 0.4 plus delta 0 0.157 and this is going to give us 0 0.462 so now it's easy enough to find our fx and fy 
where we found in the previous step at the beginning of this question these are uh, what we found for fx and fy and basically we just have to put our fs what we have for so fx was minus k delta cosine of alpha and here we have for fy we have k delta sine of alpha so basically we have uh, minus 1400 times delta which was 0.57 times cosine of alpha where we find it in here point uh, times 0.462 and this is going to give us minus 101.2 newton and for fy we have 1400 times 0 0.157 or delta times what we found for sine of alpha from here which is 0 0.886 and this is going to give us 194.4 newton uh, which would be the final answer for this question so this question was the last question for this section of the textbook in the second chapter which pretty much covers what we had in the previous questions in all of them uh, we just add a little bit the concept of force in the spring the rest is pretty similar and it's, it's a bit com more complicated to what we have in the previous questions but definitely very good to wrap up this section of the textbook hope it was helpful let me know if you have any questions or you have a better solution to solve this feel free to drop it in the comment section and you guys take care i'll see you in the next video have a good one mm -hmm.